Hello and welcome again to Python programming. In the previous video, we installed Anaconda, uh, which came along with a few other products. And I went over a short introduction uh, to the Jupyter Notebook as well as Spider. Today we'll do some coding. Uh, we will start with talking about the commonly used data types. As I mentioned in the previous video, I will be using the Jupyter Notebook for the presentation. And I wanted to start it in a way different than what we did last time. In the previous video, we started um, Jupyter Notebook by launching, first of all, the uh, Anaconda Navigator. And then we clicked on Launch under the uh, Jupyter Notebook. And that's how we started uh, the notebook. Today, I will start the notebook a little bit differently. I would like to access the command line and, and start it this way. Uh, just look, everyone knows I'm using Windows, so your platform might be different, but I'm showing here for Windows. So I'll uh, press Shift and then right click. It will open this, these options here. So choose the this option right here. Open command window here. It will open the command line right here. Uh, so just type Jupyter Notebook. Uh, I'll take a second. It will initiate the, uh, the kernel. I'll talk about this in a minute. And it will also open a window in the browser, as I mentioned last time. You want to keep this window open. And again, a uh, web browser will, will open up. It does not need uh, internet connection. So this is localhost. Uh, notice it says uh, notebook list is empty. This is the folder that I created, uh, which, again, keep this open and close this one. Uh, it doesn't have any, any files. You can start from the line command. You didn't have to go here. You can go to the line command in the, you know, the main windows. It will open the notebook in that folder. So that's why I chose to you know, press shift within this folder. So again, to access this particular one. There are other ways to um, access the, the notebook. Again, this is one way. And as we go further in the course, I'll be showing more, uh, more of these methods. All right, so here's uh, the, the page as we showed it last time. This is what we call the dashboard. Uh, it shows the list of uh, files and folders in, inside of uh, this folder that we opened. Uh, we want to start a new notebook. And here's the, uh, the page that we saw last time we worked with. So the first thing we want to do is, is again, introduce some uh, data types. We will start with these uh, three primary data types, integers. Integers is any just whole number, positive, negative, or 0, 100, 350, 17, 0, negative 2, including negative numbers. Decimal numbers are called you know, floating point numbers, floats, numbers that include decimal points, 3.0, 3.71, 6.3, and so on. Strings are a sequence of characters. So these are the three types we'll be covering in, in this video. So let's start with integers. Let's say we want to define the variable x um, to be x equals 5. So we hit shift enter to run the cell. That's the alternative or the shortcut for pressing the uh, play button or the going to the cell. So you can just click uh, press shift and enter. You run the cell. And let's say you want to find um, um, x plus 1. This is an example here. So some mathematical operations along the way as we talk about numbers. Uh, same thing with subtraction, multiplication. Uh, say x times 8 is 40. Uh, let's look at division now. If you divide x over 2, just as an example, uh, the answer comes as, as 2. Now, obviously, the answer when you divide 5 over 2 is not 2, it's 2.5. Now, we can see here because both numbers are of type integer, the answer comes out as an integer. Uh, so, a way around this is really to uh, uh, talk about floats right now. The second type we're considering in this video is dividing, uh, let's say, x over 2.0. And now we can see the answer is 2.5. We can use the type function to identify the type of a variable. Let's say uh, type x, and it will tell us it's it's an integer. Uh, you can do type of uh, a number and get a similar result, or type uh, of let's say as we did before, uh, type x over uh, three as an integer, um, as compared to if you do type 3.0 it's a float. All right, now let's go back to the value of x. All right, x shift enter uh, is equal to 5. Let's define y as, let's say, 3.5. Shift enter. And if you, if you combine, combine x and y, uh, the type will be automatically a float. So let's say type x plus y, shift enter, 
it's a float. So if you combine two types, uh, integer, two, two numbers, integer and uh, a float, the final answer is automatically a float. All right, now to some uh, mathematical operations, uh, a little more than what we've seen. Uh, exponentiation, if you take the power, let's say 2 to the power of 3, uh, you have times times notation to the power of 3, and the answer is 8. So this is the exponential uh, notation in Python. If you want to do absolute value, ABS absolute value, let's say negative 3, uh, that would be equal to 3. We can use the max function to uh, select the maximum element, let's say 2.3, 2.4, comma, 5, comma, 6, shift enter, and we'll give you the maximum number in the set. We could do the same thing with the min field if you try it out. You can also use the round function, round, let's say 2 point, etc. shift enter, it will round it to the nearest integer, but if you happen to add an argument here, let's say comma 3, it will round to the nearest uh, three decimal places. If you have an integer variable and you want it to be treated as a float, uh, let's review here the x variable, shift enter, it's 5. And you want it to be treated by, by the program as a float number, so you could do uh, float x and it will be treated as, as a float, 5.0. Alright, now we talked about integers and floats with some mathematical operations that go along with them. Uh, now let's move on to talk about strings. Strings are defined in codes. Here's an example, let's say the uh, variable a, uh, let's say hello, and that's here, so I'll print A, we get the, uh, the output here. It doesn't have to be double quotes, it can be just a uh, single quote. So do this here, and you get the exact same output right here. No preference whatsoever over uh, between double quotes and single quote. It will make a difference in some cases, however, uh, here's a, a quick example. Let's see, when uh, you want to say, uh, let's say print, let's use double quotes here, uh, he said, and then quotes for what he said here. Close the double code, you will get an error. Here's how to fix that. So print, and we want to replace the outer the outer codes right here by single codes, and then paste. And now we see the print statement comes out okay. Now let me show you some of the basic uh, uh, operations with strings. You can add uh, two strings like so. Here it concatenates the two strings. I added a space here to account for that. Now you may still remember the variable a that we defined a little bit earlier. Um, hello, so what happens if I do a times 3? You can see the uh, same string is repeated three times. We can also use the len function which measures the length of the string. So length a which has five characters as we can see from here. And that's the len function. A string is a sequence of characters. So the string a hello is a sequence of five characters each one has its own number, so we can look at hello as, again, item number or element number uh, 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. And this one thing to mention here about Python, uh, the sequencing starts at 0 uh, rather than 1, like some other languages. So you can call all uh, the elements of the sequence, let's say you say a0 or 1. Uh, this way you get the, uh, the uh, as you can see from here, item number one, so again, h is the zeroth element, e is the first element, and so on and so forth. So if you do a0, a0, you get the h, a4, that's the last letter. Oh, so what happens if we put a, a number that's greater than, than, than four? We get an error, it says out of range. You can also use negative indexing in, in Python. So if you put negative one, it gives you the last element. So it starts from the back and again with negative indexing from the back it starts at negative 1 not a 0. So negative 1 on the back. So if we go negative 2 it will print, print an L, right? Negative 3 will print an L as well and so on. Now let me define a new variable as uh, say variable D, hello world, it's defined like that. Strings are objects in Python which means um, it has uh, methods, so if you b dot, then by the way you can uh, hit the tab uh, key, it will show you what um, available methods you have that you can use uh, with the string, and uh, feel free to try them out, I'll try some of the basic ones, you could do b dot split, sp and then tab, it will complete the, um, as you can see from here, let me add the parentheses, shift enter, it will split b into two different, or a list of two different strings, 
hello world so we'll split it by by the space so the default is spa white space if you define it some say you want to split it by some other things like comma whatever you can also define that we'll go over this in details later on okay now let's uh, redefine the variable a I want to define the variable a to be this string right here and notice I intentionally left a couple of white spaces in the beginning of this string the same thing at the end there are a couple of spaces here uh, there are occasions where you, when you get uh, you know lines from file or from the website from the web page you will end up getting some extra undesired uh, blank spaces uh, in the beginning and the end so we can use the command so let me run this first so I'm redefining uh, the variable a I would like to uh, now uh, do some operation we've done this in the uh, previously a few minutes ago so if you do a four so item number four would be again two white blanks here so zero one two three four and that's a letter a as I mentioned before the starting point is, is zero so we could also do slicing so we can take a slice of this number we could do a and then take say a range from let's say zero to seven just uh, as an example and you can see here we got uh, again one two three four five six seven right so and these are the seven characters that we, we got from here so it's if you think of them as uh, the index of the number we're starting from index zero all the way to index six which is this blank space index seven is not the seventh element is not included so the ending point here is not included so that's what we call indexing or slicing obviously the extra white spaces in the beginning and the ending are not desired we'd like to get rid of them and we use the strip command so let's say we define b equals a dot strip tab it will continue and then shift enter now let's print b now we see the, the exact phrase without the uh, pieces in the beginning and ending you can get the entire uh, string by typing b and then u like that so leaving the second entry blank that means all the way to the end you can get all the elements except the last two like so and you put negative two so everything up to minus two from the back and you get everything except the last two letters if we want to get every other element we can do this here and adding a third argument to two so you skip every other element let's see what we get here and you can see from here you're taking the first skip one take the next skip one take the next next and so on you can also actually do the exact same thing by missing the zero again if you remove the zero that means start from the beginning so missing an index means if it's in the beginning that means start from the very first element if you're uh, leaving out the second blank that means go all the way to the end you can also also use the find it gives you the index of the first occurrence of the letter uh, that you indicated or the character here so 0 1 2 so it's the index number 2 if you do uh, the R find command it searches from the back Control V the R find here it gives you the 14 if we scroll up here so this is the the index of this letter a right here so searches from the back the R find is reversed searching notice it only gives you one element or the first hit basically so what happens if we search for a character that's it's not present let's say we're searching for the letter Z there's no letter Z in the phrase so you get a negative one so that's what you get when um, you search for something that doesn't exist in the, in the string you can search for how many times an element shows in in this or a character shows in the string uh, you use the count command to do that so B dot count so a was repeated two times Feel free to try some of the other methods that go with strings all right, that's the end of our video for today. Uh, thanks for listening, and I hope you're enjoying learning Python.